Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 48. Before I begin, please subscribe to the MedED YouTube channel. Uh, please support our mission of, you know, having free knowledge accessible to everyone across the globe. So here we have a case here. And the question that I have for you guys is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a labral tear, a partial thickness rotator cuff tear, a full thickness rotator cuff tear? or a capsule tear? What's the most likely diagnosis here? And, you know, if we scrutinize this case, first of all, this is a fluoroscopic image of a right shoulder arthrogram. We can see the needle coming in here. The tip of the needle is right here, uh, pretty much at the rotator interval, right? The space between where the subscapularis is coming. So the subscapularis is coming here and starting onto the lesser tuberosity. And the supraspinatus tendon is usually right here. And this space between the subscapularis and the supraspinatus is known as a rotator interval. And that's often a place where you can go to get access into the glenohumeral joint. Now, there are other places that you can go to get access, but the rotator interval is one nice place where you can get easy access. It's typically along the superior medial, medial quadrant of the humeral head, as right here. And we definitely have contrast, uh, you know, outlining the glenohumeral joint space here, right? It's outlining it here. Uh, but the key to all arthrogram cases is identifying where contrast should be and where contrast should not be, right? So here we have contrast of so pacifying the glenohumeral joint right here, but this contrast here is certainly not in the glenohumeral joint, right? Because any contrast that goes beyond the greater tuberosity is not part of the joint capsule, right? Because this here is a greater tuberosity. You know, the joint capsule does not extend past the greater tuberosity. So this fluid or contrast is in the subacromial cell deltoid bursa. So the fact that we've done an arthrogram and contrast has extravasated into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, this must mean that this is, there is a full thickness rotator cuff tear, right? Because the only way contrast can get from the glenohumeral joint all the way into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa is if it traverses the entire thickness of the tendon, right? So a partial thickness tear wouldn't have contrast going into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa because you would just have contrast going into the substance of the tendon, but it wouldn't quite get to the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, right? So the fact that we have contrast all the way into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa means that there must be a tear or a perforation in the full thickness of the tendon to allow contrast to go from the joint space all the way into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, right? Now, a labral tear would be very difficult to diagnose on a fluoroscopic image, and the MRI would be very telling, but remember, the labrum is here, right? You know, along the, you know, it's a 360-degree structure that, you know, encompasses the entire glenoid, right? So we would expect contrast to be here or here, certainly not here, right? And a capsular injury would typically involve contrast going beyond the confines of the joint capsule, typically adjacent to the uh, joint, like right here, you know, beyond the confines of the inferior glenohumeral ligament, like maybe right here, right? So uh, the best answer here is a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Now, this is the MRI image of this exact same patient. You can see this black structure right here is a supraspinatus tendon, and it should be inserting right here along the greater tuberosity, but we have a, a tendon gap suggesting the full thickness tear, right? And we have contrast going from the glenohumeral joint all the way into the subacromial cell deltoid bursa, traversing the full thickness of the tendon, right? And we can have fluid and contrast extending beyond the confines of the joint capsule, beyond the greater tuberosity here, right? So a nice MR correlate for the fluoroscopic image that you saw suggesting the full thickness rotator cuff tear. Now we typically do an MRI arthrogram to evaluate uh, the intraarticular structures, you know, we, we, we prefer MRI over CT because of the higher soft tissue contrast resolution. However, there are certain patients like who are claustrophobic or have pacemakers that can't do an MR arthrogram. And in those cases, we often do a CT arthrogram. Okay. So in arthrogram, contrast should only stay in the glenohumeral joint if you're doing a shoulder arthrogram, right? So if you have contrast extending into the subacromial rotator bursa, that means that it's a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Not necessarily a complete tear, right? Because a complete tear would be a full thickness, full width. It doesn't have to be a full width, but it does have to be a full thickness rotator cuff tear. And of course, the most commonly torn rotator cuff tendon is a supraspinatus. That's by, just as we saw in this case, that's by far uh, the most common that we see, but that's not to say that an infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis can't be torn. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.